the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 126, 1 Kings 11, the second half of Solomon's rule. Solomon's heart turned away from God, which meant that the shrines of idols were built in Jerusalem and the country was threatened of division. First point, towards the end of Solomon's monarchy, his heart shifted away from a kingdom of priests and towards the format of an empire. Solomon could have used his late years of rule to implement the expansion of the Jerusalem temple through the court of Gentiles as he prayed during the prayer of dedication during his early rule. However, his later rule shifted from a kingdom of priests to the format of an empire. Solomon started to accept foreign princesses as his wives, and one thing led to another, and he ended up having a thousand wives and concubines. These international marriage deals made Solomon a very busy and tired man. Second point, different from David, who maintained his heart towards God, Solomon had a change of heart three times. David was always focused on God, whether he was full of joy, distressed, or in despair. But Solomon had a change in heart three times. We can see that during his early rule, Solomon prayed for wisdom in order to rule over God's people wisely. God blessed Solomon's heart. The second is towards the later years of his rule, when his heart started to shift away from God. Because of this, God came to Solomon twice. However, Solomon did not turn his heart back to God, which tore the country into two. The third is right towards the end of his life, when he wrote Ecclesiastes. He wrote this book full of regret. At least, he changed his heart before he died, and came back to God full of repentance. Third point, the characteristics of Solomon's later rule were extravagant luxury, excess tax, and religious decomposition. The early years of Solomon's rule were not lavish or extravagant. He managed to set up a feasible system to distribute something to all the twelve tribes. But towards the later years of his rule, international marriages changed Solomon to become lavish and extravagant. Solomon started to impose a great deal of tax on people and the later years were also full of religious decomposition. With Solomon's heart shifting away from a kingdom of priests, he started to abuse his political power, centering on the tribe of Judah. This resembled Saul's rule. Fourth point, Jeroboam, the hard worker, became Solomon's rival. God warned Solomon twice to return to him, but when Solomon refused to listen, God became angry and proclaimed that he would take away the country from Solomon and give it to one of his servants. As David appeared in front of Saul, Jeroboam appeared in front of Solomon. Jeroboam was an able architect whom Solomon had acknowledged during the rule of David. God proclaimed that he would anoint Jeroboam as a king. After Solomon died, God revealed the reason for taking ten tribes from him. God also revealed what was to happen for Solomon's son after Solomon's death. God moreover revealed his covenant made with Jeroboam. Jeroboam headed to flee to Egypt, 
for a while from Solomon. Fifth point, the reason God did not take away all of Solomon's ruling power was because of the covenant he made with Judah and David. Through Jacob's blessing, God had given a promise to Jacob's fourth son, Judah. Later on, God made a covenant with David during the planning of the Jerusalem temple through the prophet Nathan. But my love would never be taken away from me, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. The reason God did not take away Solomon's power entirely was because of his promise with Judah and David. Because of the covenant God made and because of the fact that David was God's servant, Solomon and his sons stayed as a king until the last king, Zedekiah. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tongdok Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does, the way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life, 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app. 